Hi, I'm Jack Cush with Room Now. I'm here at RWCS 2018 in Maui. Fabulous meeting. I want to tell you about a session that I ran yesterday called Hot Seat. Hot Seat's a session I've been doing for the last four years where I'm the moderator and I present real world vignettes to an expert panel of faculty who get to weigh in in a sort of stump the chump manner on what the diagnosis, what the approach is, how you would manage some real world patients that I've seen in the past year. I'm going to give you three examples of what we covered yesterday. First is a case of a 32 year old white male who presents with uh, three tender joints, uh, two swollen joints, and he's had a three month history. And he's not done well on non-steroidals over the counter. He comes in and sees me and the question is, what do you do? Obviously he was tested. All of his tests were negative. He's seronegative for ANA, rheumatoid factor, CCP, 14338, a parvovirus, hep B, hep C. Everything's negative in him and he gets treated with a short course of steroids. 10 milligrams a day for two weeks, five milligrams a day for two weeks. He returns a month later. He says the steroids didn't help him very much, but he no longer has any swollen joints but he still has two tender joints. And the question is, what do you do with these patients? This was uh, discussed by the panel. Most felt that you basically manage such a patient uh, symptomatically, unless, of course, he's a person who needs his hands for his job, in which case you may want to be more aggressive in managing inflammatory arthritis from the outset, because he clearly did have inflammation when he first presented. This is best termed undifferentiated polyarthritis or oligoarthritis or undifferentiated arthritis. Turns out that such patients are more common than rheumatoid arthritis and their outcomes are different. Undifferentiated arthritis patients have a greater than 50% chance of going into remission, whereas RA seldom goes into remission, less than 10% of cases. Undifferentiated arthritis often responds very well to steroids and symptomatic management and may not need, but they sometimes will need, short courses of DMARDs such as methotrexate or hydroxychloroquine. This patient is still being followed up. His course seems fairly benign at this point. He's being managed with non-steroidals rather than methotrexate. The second case is a um, young girl, 14 years old, who presents with polyarthritis and is found to have an elevated aldolase. She's 14 years old. She presents with arthralgias and uh, aches and pains and not being herself. And she's athletic and she's still doing her sports, but she feels that uh, you know, the pain is, is bothersome to her. On exam, she actually has seven tender joints, six swollen joints. She has erythema and Gotrin's-like lesions over her knuckles, and she has periungal erythema. Labs are fairly normal, although she does have an elevated sed rate and CRP, and her aldolase is 14, but her CPK is normal. On further testing, hepatitis serologies are all normal. Uh, this patient was considered as having possibly minocycline being used for her acne, minocycline induced uh, lupus or arthritis, turns out that even when minocycline was withdrawn, her symptoms persisted. So what does she have? Does she, ha does she have arthritis? Is it drug induced, whatever? My diagnosis was, and, and we had, had a few that reluctantly went along with this, was that she has JDM, juvenile dermatomyositis. Uh, and it turns out that half of such patients will have arthritis and polyarthritis that can be quite aggressive and needs, need to be treated. When I uh, saw her with her first presentation, Waiting for labs, I put her on methotrexate, 12 and a half milligrams a week, along with some low-dose prednisone that we withdrew. And then in uh, several months of follow-up, she's done great. Her skin lesions have faded, her aldolase is normalized, and her um, joint counts have gone way down. So that's JDM with an arthritis presentation. Again, when you're seeing kids, if you see kids, the early diagnosis of JDM can be challenging. And you need to look for the heliotrope rash, which we seldom see in adults and be aware that they can get arthritis, they can get a high amount of calcinosis in children also with JDM. Last case was a, a fibromyalgia patient who all of a sudden started having FUOs. She presents with a several month history, a 30 year old woman presents with a several month history of fevers almost daily of 102 to 104, highest being 104.7. Uh, labs look fairly crazy in her, but not much in the way of clinical findings other than non-painful, non-itchy urticarial lesions that tend to come and go with the fevers. Uh, on exam, she had a lot of tender joints due to her fibromyalgia, but no swollen joints, no lymphadenopathy, no hepatosplenomegaly. The lab showed very high sed rate, very high CRP, uh, a ferritin of 1,280, uh, and negative tests for hepatitis and other infectious etiologies, including uh, TB and mycobacterial infections. She did, however, have a very abnormal SPEP with a, uh, a big increase in the gamma fraction, and on immuno uh, 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 immunofixation, um, she actually had uh, biclonal gammopathy. 
So the question is, here's a person who has what appears to be an auto-inflammatory auto syndrome, and what is it? The panel thought it was adult Stills disease, but she didn't really fit the quotidian fever of Stills disease. She didn't have any swollen joints, and she didn't have the rash of Stills disease. Um, she actually was very characteristic of someone who has adult onset Schnitzler syndrome. Schnitzler syndrome is an adult onset disease. It's an adult onset febrile syndrome that's classified amongst the auto-inflammatory dis disorders. And like systemic JIA and like adult onset Stills disease, it presents with daily fevers. It is distinctive in that it often has non-painful urticaria associated with it and in that it also has a monoclonal or polyclonal gammopathy associated with it. Such patients are at high risk for um, uh, lymphoplasmacytic malignancies and Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia developing in up to 15% of individuals. So they do need to be followed by the hematologist as well as rheumatologist. As this is an auto-inflammatory syndrome, they have a unique and special a great response to IL-1 inhibition. This patient went on anakinra. Her symptoms went away just like that. She's being followed out now prospectively. She's doing incredibly well on daily shots, but she needs to be watched for a hematologic malignancy. Anyway, some interesting cases. The panel and the audience loved it. A lot of discussion. Uh, we'll see you next year here at RWCS. Uh, thanks very much.